Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Test Manager Certification. We are in chapter seven talking about people's skills, team composition, and moving to the last segment of this chapter as well as this particular tutorial series that is 7.6 communications. Of course, in our previous tutorial, how we spoke about motivation, the communication is equally same where we talk about establishing a way by which you can communicate to your team members and establishing a way by which your team members internally can communicate with each other is very important. And establishing that communication can be actually done in several ways, right from the uh, way you interact with each other or the meetings which you conduct or some kind of social activities when you conduct you actually build up a great relationship between the team and communication a lot of people sometimes you do find that they hesitate to interact with uh, some of your colleagues some of your team members just because they don't uh, feel like expressing themselves or sometimes they feel like shy or hesitant to share their views so making them jovial or kind of like, you know, uh, more of a social. So you involve them in some kind of get togethers outside the premises of your office or internally as well when you talk about uh, in terms of, uh, you know, interacting with them and making them, you know, comfortable with the other team members. And here, you know, further to add over this is we are talking from the professional point of view that how exactly a communication of the technical discussions can be done in the most efficient way. So the team communication primarily takes place by the following means, which includes the documentation of the product, which basically means that what exactly is the overall uh, documentation is for the entire life cycle, the way or the most importantly, the way you create the documentation the, in terms of like the detailed information or availability of a particular document will make team understand what exactly the process is all about. If in case I'm missing some of the distinct and some of the uh, critical information in my documentation, it would be definitely difficult for the team to remember and understand that what exactly we should do next. So proper documentation plays a vital role and the test products included here are test strategy, test plan, test cases, test summary report, defect report, etc. Anything which communicates to them the progress update or how exactly the team altogether has done will definitely be considerant in, in this particular process to add value to the communication. The second important thing here is the feedback provided on the reviewed documents. Of course, you do understand that review plays a vital role in your overall development process and including the test process. So at any point of time when you actually communicate the feedback provided based on the review of a particular document plays a vital role, including the requirements, uh, functional specification, use cases, component test documentation, be it anything, any type of work product which is being reviewed. The way the review comments are provided plays a vital role because you just want to contribute and you give some of the you know suggestions and feedback, that's good, but that's not helpful. So communication plays a vital role in terms of the review because Sometimes your communication lets you know that what's going to knock your door later in the life cycle and you should be just prepared for it. Information gathering and dissemination, which is like interaction with the developers, which plays a crucial role again. Uh, the way you interact with the developers as you are the one who are working kind of against with them and trying to find out mistakes in their work. So it should not be like more of a kind of rivalry it should not be like of uh, opposite minded rather you should be working in collaboration to make sure that when you report an issue in somebody's work you're not hurting that person's ego you're just trying to make sure that that person finds it equally important like the way you found a particular defect and that he should be happy about those reports rather than getting feeling offended or getting you know egoistic saying that no you didn't you're not supposed to say like that, right? So people should not be uh, made feel offended or rather just made feel like, okay, yeah, it is a part of our job and we are doing it and everyone should be happy about that, including the other team members within your team as well. You should equally take care of that. And talking to the management, of course, there is a different way of communicating. So must establish all these skills within your team members. The communication between the tester and the other stakeholders must be very professional objective and effective in order to build and maintain respect for the team. 
Diplomacy and objectivity are required when providing feedback, particularly constructive feedback on the work products of the others. I think that's, that's what we were just talking about. And we have actually discussed a lot in the foundation level that what exactly is the psychology of testing and tester and developer have different mindsets. And when we report something, the person can feel bad about it. So we should mind our language or be considerate that what happens if the same statement comes to you in that particular place, right? Assume yourself as a developer and a tester coming to you and saying such statements, then you realize that, okay, well, what I was about to say to this person was not actually objective. It was more of a like kind of proving that person that you have gone wrong and I'm the best. <laughs> so you generally don't try to do that, right? You try to make sure the other person feels as comfortable as possible. And at the same time, you are equally responsible for keeping the team more and more collaborative and interactive. In addition, the communication should be focused on achieving test objectives and on improving quality, both in product and the process used in the produce, used to produce the software systems. Test managers communicate with a wide audience, including users, project test team members, management, external testing groups, customers, and many such people, right? So having an effective communication is equally important for the test manager as well. Because, okay, for a tester, you are just limited to your team members or the other stakeholders, but you report to management, you talk to the internal teams, which are other than yours, you talk to the external vendors for performing some of your uh, specialized testing needs, right? So establishing that way of communication plays really, really cr critical role for your a test manager position. So establishing a great communication within yourself will also lead uh, your team to be inspired by you. The way I see test manager writes the mail is amazing. So let me just follow those principles and start learning those writing skills. And communication is in skill itself. So you cannot just say that, okay, if I can talk, it is communication. It's more about like transforming the knowledge, transforming the information. Just that applies to me as well that if I'm just talking here and the other people are not able to understand anything, it's of no use, it's all a waste. But if I'm able to transform you into that understanding, what I have, then of course, that makes it or calls it an effective communication. With any communication, but particularly during presentation, it is important to understand the message that is being sent, the ways in which the message was or uh, maybe received and the explanation that is needed to create the correct environment for the message to be accepted. Now that's where something very important, like when you are presenting some of the information to different stakeholders or maybe your team members, you try to make sure that the information which you're trying to put it across is exactly reaching the same. Because you may make use of different words, you may make use of different statements, but how far the team is able to understand it. So you should know your audience at any point of time when you're presenting something to them and should know that the, uh, the jargons, the words, the you know, uh, statements, whatever you make use of is understandable. And your communication should be so proficient that the person gets the right message what you actually wanted to convey without any kind of confusions or diversions. Now, since the test manager is often a position of presenting project status information, it is important that this information be at an appropriate level of detail and in presented or be presented in a way that is clearly stated and easily understood. So don't try to be a great uh, speaker rather than you know concentrate on the message to be delivered to the audience. As far as they understand your concern, they understand your request, they understand your instructions, the team will fulfill that. But if your communication was not that effective or it was confusing, it was not clear at all, the team will be misguided or maybe misinstructed and they will definitely do not deliver what you were actually looking forward to. So make sure that being a test manager, you develop certain skills where you talk efficiently and make sure that the team has acknowledged what you actually wanted to communicate to them. Also to add here, communicating efficiently helps to keep the attention of the audience while still conveying the correct message. Each presentation should be viewed by the test manager as an opportunity to promote quality and 
quality processes. Now here we are just targeting about like uh, efficient communication is basically just not about presenting something, right? It is all about like people, how well your audience is grasping that, whether they are attentive to this or not. Because if your communication does not attract people or attract their attention, then you need to learn. You need to improvise yourself because people are finding your communication or presentation quite boring. And they say that, all right, he just keeps brabbering something here and there and uh, we don't anyways understand. So they can actually be ignorant to your messages, can be ignorant to your presentations. And you lose that respect being called as a test manager for the organization. So improvising your communication will definitely lead to great attraction from the team and the audience listening to you. And definitely by having that attention being grabbed, you can communicate whatever you want to communicate. A test manager is not only communicating with the people external to the department, which is also referred to as outward communication. An important part of the test manager's job is to communicate effectively within the testing group as well, which is inward communication. So within your organization is called as inward communication. If you talk anything outside the organization, you call it as outward communication. Okay. And this again, like uh, goes with the, you know, it can be within the team, outside the team, within the organization, outside the organization, all these can be referred to inward and outward communication. Also, the test manager uh, jobs is to communicate effectively within the testing group to pass on the news, instructions, changes in priorities and other standard information that is imparted in the normal process of testing. So be the information anything, you should realize that how to communicate internally, how to communicate externally. Plus, a test manager may also communicate to specific individuals both up and down, which means upward communication. That means someone who is senior than the test manager and someone who are junior than the test manager in the hierarchy. So the upward is called as upward communication and the downward, of course, is called as downward communication and the management chain in the progress, which is your hierarchy. So a test manager works basically in all the angles towards the communication point of view. You have to communicate internally, externally, upward and downwards. So you should be very much skilled that how do you handle all these directions of communication and communicate effectively because they are different. But how they are different, of course, when you talk about inward, people know you who you are, what you generally make use of. But people who are outside your department, they don't know who you are, the way you talk, the way you communicate, the words which you make use of or the statements which you make use of, where you basically lack, they don't know about it. So you have to be more professional there. Right. Similarly, when you report to someone your superior, you try to be more professional there and make sure that you do not just hurt somebody, right, by using unwanted steps or do not provide it as an instruction. Rather, it must be a pleasing nature and request which you follow for the hierarchy. And the downward team, yeah, I'm not saying that to kill them. I'm just saying that, yeah, as they are working under you, working as your teammates, you can be a little liberal with them and casual. So as far as you are a senior or you're talking about your juniors, you can be as casual as possible with them and say that, okay, fine, enjoy. You don't have to be formal with me. But when you report to someone, your superior, like vice presidents or, you know, the head of your department and so on, you try to make sure that you showcase yourself as professional. The test manager must be master of various means of communication. Much information is communicated via email or verbal interaction, like formal or informal meetings formal or informal reports, and even though the use of the test management tools, such as defect management tools, etc., you still take care of all these things, right? So all communication must be professional and objective. No matter if you're transcripting something in your management tools, or you're talking about verbal communications during the meetings, and so on. Proofreading, both for quality and the content, is a necessary step even in the most urgent communication. Written communication often lives long beyond the actual project. It is important for the test manager to produce professional quality documentation that is representative or representative of an organization that promotes quality. Now, this is something really, really important to be remembered, team, that people say that, does wound hurt? No, 
the heel, but the words, yes. <laughs> That's a great thing. I think I, I heard it in one of the movies and uh, I don't know if you can figure out that movie, you, it's really good. So it says that, you know, if you say something verbally, people can actually forget it for some time. Like after a few days, you can ignore that. Okay, what he said and you don't remember, that is your memory. But you write something, if it is a written conversation, it remains for lifelong. Okay, and people can always refer to it. And there, it's just not the people who are in front of you right now. <clears throat> Assume that you have written some of the policy documentations or standard documentation for an organization. Even if you quit or the team who was with you quits, when the fresh graduates join, they refer to that document, right? As a KT information, knowledge transfer. So that time, the people will still find out who the hell wrote this document. Did he, didn't he know that, how to write it? Because people can have different abilities, right? So written documentation can be referred for lifelong. And it's just not a common like verbal communication. I say you something and I forgot tomorrow. Or you forget tomorrow, right? I cannot just ignore it. There are so many references which are made to a single document every time. So what should you do? Proofreading. Proofreading basically means that once you submit, you cannot do anything. So before you submit anything, you try to read it yourself or go through that as a review part to make sure that whatever you're writing does not have anything to hurt anyone or create misunderstanding or miscommunication. So do a proofreading before you write up an email, write a report or write any kind of documentation which can be related to any of the work products in the entire process. Okay. So with that, we come to end of this particular series and I hope we have completed everything well detailed. And that was really a great session working on the test manager altogether. We have one more quick tutorial to go ahead with the sample questions of this chapter. So let's look forward to that. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.